Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to share some features and tools inside FL Studio that generally help me work a bit faster and get more out of the software. So let's waste no time and just get right into it. One of the things I like about these style of videos is they sometimes introduce you to some topics that you may not have heard of, and then you can go on and do further study about whatever interests you. But if you have seen any of these topics before, simply use the chapter markers to skip ahead. So the first one is very simple, and that's just using the F keys. So for instance, F7 will pull open the piano roll, F6 will open up the channel rack. You'll see me using a lot of these in the video, but the best way to use them is to simply just press all the F keys on your keyboard and see what they do. This is a very quick one. Anyone who's worked with audio will know that when you start chopping it up, it starts sounding pretty choppy because the audio stops right away. Sometimes there's a click or a pop. If you open the sample up, go to de-clicking mode, choose one of the modes here, smooth or crossfade, and it will smoothly fade the audio away, which helps with background noise, but it also prevents any clicks and pops, and it will sound an awful lot more natural. Here's an easy way to find the MIDI notes of any audio sample. In this window here, right click, edit in pitch corrector. It will open up in new tone. Don't worry about what it looks like. Simply select this, send to piano roll. So now I'm going to select a synthesizer, send this to the piano roll, and you can see right here, if I press F7, all the MIDI notes have opened up in the piano roll. Instead of playing back as audio, these MIDI notes will trigger this synthesizer now. This sometimes needs some fine tuning, so I have another detailed video linked here and in the description to help you get the best out of it. This technique can be a real lifesaver, so picture this, you're just playing on your favorite synthesizer, and whatever you played, you liked it, but you weren't recording. And I know for some people, you put the metronome on, you hit record, and everything falls to pieces. It happens to the best of us. The good thing is, FL Studio is recording all the time in the background whatever MIDI notes you're playing. If you go up to Tools, Score Logger, Dump Score Log to Selected Pattern, let's just say the last two minutes, whatever I was playing has just been added in to the piano roll here. Let's take a listen. Sure, it might need a little bit of tidying up, I might still want to quantize it or not, but it's all there. So if you did happen to play something legendary, some beautiful melody, and you can't even remember what you did because you were just in the moment enjoying the music, the good thing is FL Studio has got your back. And if I look back in the score logger, it's recording everything for the last 30 minutes. So that's pretty amazing. Some plugins are known for being very heavy on the CPU usage, and this is true for very powerful synthesizers. So if your CPU is struggling, but maybe you have a good amount of RAM or disk space, it might be a good idea to right click on the instrument and create a direct wave instrument. This effectively samples this plugin, breaking it up into different zones, playing the keys, recording back all the audio, and then packaging it up into an instrument you can play. So it takes the load off the CPU and more onto the RAM. And you can choose how many notes to sample, how many velocity layers, and it automates the whole process for you. It's really neat. I have a, another tutorial showing how to get the most out of it. You basically just start, it samples out the instrument, and then creates a direct wave sampled instrument for you, which is just here. You'll often want to layer sounds in your productions, and this could be layering super saws or something as simple as a top and low section for the bass. And often this is as simple as having two or three different instruments in the channel rack, selecting one, pressing Control C, selecting the other and Control V to copy and paste those notes down. However, if I now press F7 to go into the piano roll, if I want to make a change to one of the patterns, I'm going to now have to select the other instrument, press F7 again, and make the change manually because they're not going to change together, they're two separate patterns. This is fine when it's just one or two notes, but if you're stacking up lots of different layers like super saws or wanting to test out lots of different melodies and chords, this becomes very tedious. With these patterns cleared, I'm going to press the plus here to get the layer plugin. So just here, layer. I'm going to hold shift and scroll just to move that to the top, and I'm going to select it. Then we're going to use this layering option here, set children so that we can just have one piano roll, play some notes here, and it's going to trigger both of these patterns at the same time. All I have to do is select any of the instruments or channels that I want to link to it. So that's just going to be a right click to select those two. Press Set Children, and now any note I play here 
is going to play them together. So now if I paste my MIDI into this layer, it's going to play that top and low bass together. So this is maybe a very simple example. I like to use this when I haven't quite decided which sounds I want to use, or I'm using lots of different instruments playing the same chords, and I'm not quite sure exactly what chords and melodies I want. It makes it much easier to control all of them with one layer. Following on from that last point, you can group channels here to stay organized. So just a right click, select the channels you want to group, press Alt and G, and then give it a name. So this will be my bass group. If I go back to all, I can make another selection just for the drums. That's a right click to select and deselect these. Alt G, drums. Probably doesn't seem necessary when you only have uh, so few channels, but I'm sure we've all been in a situation where we have you know, almost hundreds of channels here and it can be good to know uh, which channels are contributing to which sounds in your project. Just keeps things nice and organized. Often when creating music, our projects can become a little bit too large and we end up with a lot of duplicated channels and ideas which never made it to the final project. It can be really tedious to clean out all of these channels, but you need to if you want to keep the project running smooth. So there's two tools I'm going to show you for this, and they're both located up here in Tools, Macros. The first is Select Unused Channels. So if you give that a left click, it just takes a moment and then it will show you all the channels in your project which don't have any associated note or sort of piano roll data. And then you can choose what you want to do with those. It's highlighted them, you can choose to delete them or simply leave them there. The other is Tools, Macros, Purge Unused Audio Clips. This does something similar. If an audio clip isn't on the playlist or doesn't have any note data associated with it, it's going to delete it from your project, which should dramatically reduce the project size. And you can see that I have far fewer channels in the channel rack. Since we're looking at the macros anyway, I'm gonna go back in Tools, Macros, and the last one is Switch Smart Disable for All Plugins. And this is another way to dramatically cut down on the CPU load of your project. You can also check out my CPU optimization video, which I've linked in a card at the top of the video there if you're interested in making your projects run even more smoothly. The default way of displaying audio clips in FL Studio often confuses users about whether it's a mono or a stereo track. You can hear, for instance, this piano is stereo. with a wide and sort of rich soundstage, but it just looks like a single track here. To change this, we can select the pattern with a double left click, right click here and select multi-channel waveform view. You'll notice now you can see the left and right channels of the audio, and if I zoom in, you can in fact see that they are quite different from each other. This won't change the sound of the project in any way, but I know that it helps some users visualize the left, right, center, and stereo information. This is one of my favorites, and I use it all the time. It can remove noise, hiss, electric static noise from any sample or recording. First, I need to select an empty mixer track and open up the Edison. So a shortcut, that's Control and E. Once the Edison's open, all I have to do is drag in my sample. Let's take a listen. To quickly remove the noise from the whole sample, simply left click and drag to select an area that only has that noise. Right click up here on this brush icon, then select the whole sample. You could drag it out or you could press Ctrl A, and then left click on the brush icon. Make sure that the Denoise tool is activated. You don't need these two down here. Pull the amount down and then just hit accept. Let's take a listen. and before, often this is a very simple tool to use, but there are a few nuances, so I have a short video tutorial linked here which shows exactly what all the dials do and explains how to get the most out of it if you're maybe denoising a guitar or a vocal or something a little bit more complicated. You will have noticed that FL Studio has all these windows when you can open and close anything and customize it, but this can become very frustrating when you're working with a plugin and it won't seem to sit on top of anything else, so you have to keep closing and opening other windows. It doesn't have to be this way. Simply right click up here, select Detached on any plugin, and now it will appear on top of the other windows in FL Studio. So you don't need to keep opening and closing the mixer, just gives you a little bit more space to work with. But we can go one step further. 
if I go up to Options, General Settings, down in the Miscellaneous tab, we can go to Detach All Plugins. This just means that whenever you open a new plugin, it will automatically sit on top of all the other windows, which is the way I like it, because when I'm working on a plugin, I want it in focus, then I close it, and I'm back to working in the rest of the project. Some of these next tips help me out an awful lot when mixing. So say you've got some main vocals, you've got an effects chain you like, and you'd like to copy some of it over onto the background vocals. Instead of loading all the plugins and starting from scratch, let's say I have some compressor settings that I'd like to copy across to the next one. All we have to do is just left click here, go to save preset, click and drag, and just drop it onto the other channel and it just copies across the whole preset. You can also select the entire mixer track here, left click, file, save mixer track as, and then just copy and paste the entire one over. But you'll notice that it's changed the name and uh, it also doesn't uh, copy across the routing. So the routing will be just the same as it was before. I prefer simply copying over one plugin at a time. I think that, that helps me dial in the settings a little bit better because you don't want to process everything the same. But you know, if you've got lots of tracks of guitar, Sometimes starting with similar EQ and compression settings can just speed up the mixing process and a lot of mixing is about speed. This one's great for people who like mixing with some analyzer plugins loaded up. So instead of loading them on the track that you need them or on the master, there's a channel called Current, which should be just beside your master channel here. It might be docked to the right hand side. If you select this current channel and load the analyzers there, then whichever channel you select, that audio will be run through these plugins. So I wouldn't recommend it for effect plugins, but for instance, if I just want to look at purely the vocal channels, that's just the vocals going through these two plugins now. If I click master, the entire song is now going through here. The idea here is that you only have to load the plugins once. You can just quickly check one channel at a time. I don't do a lot of mixing with my eyes, but I know it's pretty important when you're working on headphones just to be able to check the low end. And because you're only loading those plugins once instead of multiple instances across your project, it means that you're going to free up a little bit more of your CPU's resources for the actual music and not just the plugins. And while we're talking about mixing, another great feature of the mixer on FL Studio, something that I don't use enough of and people always tell me I should use it more, is this equalizer down here. It's great for just small boosts and cuts, removing a little bit of the low end. It's actually a pretty good three band equalizer and every single mixer channel has one. So I'm just affecting the vocals there. Maybe I want to affect the instruments, add a little bit more top end. You've got to be quite careful with it because it's quite sensitive. It's almost certainly going to use less CPU than loading a dedicated equalizer plugin. And sometimes, of course, you need those specialist plugins and you need many more types of filter curves. But sometimes you just need to make a very subtle change. And this is really all you need. Automation clips are so powerful and they do so much to bring your mix to life. But as you know, sometimes they can be a little bit fiddly to work with. While I do, of course, have a full tutorial dedicated to automation, there's two features that I think are a little bit hidden or often cause people problems. And one is having the slide feature enabled up here. So without slide, you can just drag one point, nice and simple. Slide enabled, it will now slide all the other points along, which is probably not what you want to do most of the time. So I find more often than not, that's quite a problem. The second is if you want to keep all the points the same, but just move them up or down. You can access this here, a left click, articulator tools, scale levels. Now, a lot of these are also very cool as well, but I find scale levels is one of the most useful. And then use the offset tool to just scale everything up or down a little bit. This next one is not so much a workflow tip, but if you press F11 to pull open the song info and you add the song name and the artist name here, then if you export it, this metadata will be attached to the file. So if you play it back, on a different media system, say you're, you're playing it from your phone or a CD, if anyone still uses those, it will show your artist name and the song name. And while that's not gonna help anything sound better, I think it looks a little bit more professional. So those are some of my favorite tools and features of FL Studio, but if you have any favorites or there's any tips or tricks you know, please leave them in a comment down below so that me and others can learn from it. So thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video and bye for now.